Hi everyone, this is Patrick. In this video, we're going to show you how to use one of the emitters, uh, our introduction to particles. Um, if we go to particle systems, this is how we create particles. There are only a few types of particles. As we go along, you'll find that there are a lot of um, repeated functionalities in many of the particle systems. So if you uh, know the concepts behind that, uh, you would be probably quite equipped to take on the rest of the particle systems. The first one is PF source, which is quite advanced kind of, uh, you know, uh, particle kind of setup. So we, we're going to skip that for now. Um, the first one we're going to go to will be uh, snow. I'm going to maximize this and just draw. Okay, uh, that's how you create your particle system, much like uh, any primitives in Max. To see more options, we will go to our modifier panel, and you'll see that this uh, an icon is created and there's a line coming out from this square. Uh, this gives us a clue how this particle is going to fall and this is the direction downwards. So if I scrub this timeline, I'll see particles start to fall. So I'll just raise it up like that. And so there we have our particle system. Pretty simple, right? Because this is a snow particle system, uh, you will see that displayed in the viewport, the shapes are like stars, like snowflakes. Let's give it a render. We'll see a star shaped like six sided shapes being represented by the particles. Okay. So there aren't really a lot of options uh, as compared to the rest of the max particle systems. So it's a good start for us. Viewport count is 100. We are seeing 100% of the particles in the system. And when we're rendering, we're rendering 100% uh, of the particles as well. So if my viewport starts to get laggy, I may decide to see less of the particles and render 100% of the particles. So I could do 10%. Okay, so we'll just see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, about 10 particles here. And then when I render, render okay, there are much more being rendered than the particles being displayed in the viewport. So we could actually increase it to 200 if I wanted to. Okay, and get like a lot, a lot more particles being rendered. Okay, let's set this back to 100. Uh, the next parameter would be the size of the flag. Okay, obviously if we increase that and we render, it would be much bigger. Okay, let's set it back to two and variation. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of variation uh, in our later particle system. So the good thing to remember would be the variation. This is uh, referring to the parameter that is on top. So uh, if my speed is 10 and I'm varying by 2, I'm giving a range of speed for my particles. Uh, some would be traveling like minus 2 from 10, some would be plus 2 from 10. So some would be traveling at 8, some would be traveling at 12. Okay, variation comes in uh, different values like this one. There's nothing specified. It would be in the units of speed. Okay. Later in uh, the other kind of particle system, you will see variation in percentage. Uh, there is no units of measurement specified, so this 2.0 would mean uh, an absolute 2.0 plus minus 10. Okay. So um, if I put my variation to zero and I scrub my timeline, I will see that the spacing between each particle stays absolutely the same. So that means um, there is no variation in uh, the speed of the particle and every particle is falling at exactly the same speed of 10. So if I put a variation of 5, okay, some particle will be going at 5 units, some particles will be going at uh, all the way up to 15 units. Okay, let's, let's put it back to 10 and everybody traveling at the same speed so that we can demonstrate our next one, tumble. Okay, this is a and an initial value that you can from 0 to 1 okay this is a uh, this is tumble at 1.0 let's duplicate that viewport and put tumble to 0, 0.0 and do a render again and two exactly same render but just that the tumble value uh, one is at set to 1.0 and one is set to 0, 0.0 so you would see that I get a slightly different render. Let's take these two. You will see some 
differences in my render, slightly different orientation. Okay. So if I set my tumble to zero, there will be no rotation in my particles. If I set my tumble to one, okay, and you will see that my particles are indeed tumbling and rotating while they are falling. So if I take a look at um, this particle, as it goes down, okay, it's rotating. Okay, and the rate, uh, how fast they rotate, is determined by this tumble rate 1.0. So if I put 4, you will see that they're rotating as they're going down. Uh, the, the speed of the rotation is sped up by quite a lot. Okay, so let's put it back to... Um, okay. The next one that we're going to is flakes, dots, and tick. I want to say that this uh, three parameters is how it, uh, the particles that get displayed in the viewport. So if I display it as dots when I render, I still get flakes. Ticks is actually uh, a lot of uh, plus signs. Okay, that's just how it's being displayed. Dots do not have orientation, so we can't really see whether the particles are tumbling. Ticks also do not have, uh, uh, the ticks are always aligned uh, in the same way, so this does not reveal orientation. So only the flakes. In this mode, we can see that the particles are spinning or where they're facing. Okay? The next one uh, will be how our particles appear in the render. So now it's a six point star, like we saw uh, just now. Let's bring back my render window. Okay, it's a six pointed star. Next one could be um, triangles. Okay, it doesn't show in the viewport, but let's render. And we'll see that all my particles have become triangles. Uh, the next one is a rather special one. Uh, it's a facing particle. Okay, this is a kind of a optical trick where the particles are always facing the camera. And we can texture them with a texture like a, a logo, a symbol, or actual like pictures of snowflakes. And we will be able to see all these snowflakes falling. So this is, gives us more control that way. The next one would be um, timing. Okay, sometimes we don't always want our particle system to start at frame 0. So if I wanted it to start at frame 10, I can. So just start at frame 10. We will not see any particle emission um, before frame 10. Okay, and it starts exactly on frame 10. And uh, the life of the particle, you will see that um, from frame 10 onwards, uh, the first particles that get generated in the sky, okay, let's follow its life. The first particle also is the first particle to disappear or to die, okay? So let's take a look, um, okay, and it disappears ahead of everybody else. So all the particles each have 30 frames of lifespan, and thereafter they scale down and disappear. That is the inherent behavior of the snow particle system. Okay, we can't change a lot, uh, a whole lot here, but uh, we will be able to uh, when we come to more versatile systems later. Then there's this um, tick, which says constant. So this is the birth rate. If I uncheck this constant, we will see that there are no particles being birthed. Without this constant, uh, the snowflakes are being generated at the, at a predefined rate. Okay. So if I take away this constant, this birth rate parameter becomes active and comes into play. So this is telling Max not to generate anything because there's zero, zero particles being birthed. Okay. If I turn on my constant again, uh, Max is telling me that uh, maximum sustainable rate is 3.3. .3. So I'm, I'm assuming that Max is churning out three particles every frame. So from 10 frame, let's take a look. Uh, let's advance one frame. Okay, so three particles are generated. And then the next frame, we'll see six, two, three, four, five, six. Six particles are being generated. So this is almost like three particles a frame. Okay. But once we turn uh, off constant, this birth rate takes over. So I could uh, now specify a new uh, speed which the particles are emitted. So if I put one, we'll see one particle being birthed every frame. Okay, so from 10, 11. 
12, okay, which is a, at a much slower rate than our default. Okay. Another cool thing about this is um, because this is a spinner, right? Um, once we turn off constant and give our own custom uh, emission speed, we can actually set key to this. So, for example, from frame 1 to frame 10, if I wanted uh, to start with frame 0 again, my start point must be 0. So a very quick way to reset this one to 0 is to right-click this er the, the arrow key, the arrow buttons, and then it will just snap back to 0. So I could go into my animation mode. At frame 0, my birth rate is 0. At frame, well, let's say 20. Uh, my birth rate goes up to 5. Okay, and then uh, because auto key is on uh, and I've changed the value, I'll see a bracket on my uh, arrow buttons that's telling me that at frame 20 there is a keyframe on this parameter. And true enough, we do see a, a tick on the timeline telling us that there is a keyframe. So at 0, uh, the bracket is uh, visible again. So at any other frame, I will not see this bracket because there is no keyframe. So let's get out of auto key and you see that at uh, frame 0 it is 0 now frame 1 is 0 0.25 so no particle is birth and then 0 0.5 so half a particle so the, the first particle is born and thereafter more and more particles get uh, but, uh, get emitted and then at frame 20 onwards it becomes a constant birth rate of 5.0 and um, Maybe later in the animation, at frame 70, uh, okay, let's turn on auto key again, up, down, so that I can maintain my 5.0, and then uh, maybe at frame 90, I decrease the emission to zero. So let's play back my animation, get out my auto key, uh, play it, so more birth, and then it dies, uh, and then the, the emission stops. Okay, so this gives us more flexibility than the, the constant spawn rate. The last that I'm going to do for this uh, snow particle system would be this width and height of the emitter. Okay, uh, when I'm dealing with particle systems, I try not to use scale. Of course, I can just scale the particle system up. Let's undo that. Okay, let's do a render. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate my render and I'm going to scale my particle system up and then I'm going to render again okay. Okay, you see that um, even though this particle system has been scaled up um, the particles itself, the size of the particles are not being scaled up compare this size with this one before it was scaled up it is exactly the same so um, scaling a particle system yeah like I said uh, I, I wouldn't actually do that uh, it scaled up the the emission area, but uh, it doesn't scale up the, the the size of the particles. So the size of the particles has a you know flake size, uh, which is a dedicated parameter that uh, is assigned to that. So um, yeah, just wanted you to take note uh, in case anything goes wrong and you were wondering why, uh, having scaled this up, the size of the particle didn't increase. So uh, that's all for snow hope this was helpful to you. Uh, we'll move on to different particle systems uh, that 3ds Max has in the next videos. Thank you for watching.